Do you need a little more room in your computer? How's this for storage? Do you want to know how it works? Let's have a look. And welcome back to the My Rail series, where we take a look at various different ways of running a rail network in Minecraft. In the last episode, we celebrated a few things, and before we go into more detailed resource gathering, we're going to need to have a little bit of an upgrade on our computer systems. So in this episode, I thought it was a good time to look at some servers. So, let's get started. So in a previous episode we created the map shown here and we've got a computer here and we've got a computer here and I can see by the end of the series we're going to have a lot of computers everywhere if we keep doing what we're currently doing. So what I thought we'd actually have a look at is in open computers just like in the real world you can upgrade your very tiny little PC to be a much bigger, gruntier and more powerful machine by putting it into a server. So, what we're going to need first is a rack, which is this guy, one rack. And by themselves, they don't do a lot. But we could put them down over here. Let's put it, uh, let's put, put it here for now. And as you can see, it doesn't actually have a lot. It's got a very basic interface, and we'll get to how this works soon. But we're also going to need, probably the guts of this whole thing, are the actual servers themselves. And much like computers, you've got the various tiers. We've got the tier 1, we've got a tier 2, we've got a tier 3, and of course the all-powerful creative server. But if we go in here, and if we start just with a very basic tier 1, you can see it gives us the tier 1. We can stick it in here, and if we click on the empty piece here, it'll bring up that. But if we click on the server itself, which you can see is now inserted, it'll bring up a server. But you'll see, straight at the back, we've got a lot more than this tier 1. Let's just compare that. So let's grab our computer case 1. And we'll stick it next door. And so here we've got a little interface, just a little less in there. And of course it's all tier 1, whereas we go into our server, and we've got a few things. So there's our tier 2s. CPU level tier 2, a uh, bit of more RAM, and of course two hard drive slots. If we were to go up to the next level, we go into here, we just right click on here again, stick that into here. Now of course we've got two. We've got our tier 1 and our tier 2. And the tier 2, as you see, takes tier 3 stuff, but it provides a lot more space. And of course, top of the list, we can go into here, we can put ourselves our tier 3. And these things are the bees knees. Look at them all. There's so many slots in here, we'll never be able to fill these up. Or is that a challenge? But what we'll do is we can, so you can have all this stuff connecting. Let's just get rid of this guy because we don't need him anymore. And we can have all these in one single block. If you wanted to, you can also add a disk drive at the bottom here. And you can see here we've got little things which, if we click on them, We'll just expand the little line going up to them. And what this does, it'll let you connect to an external site. For example, if we connect to the yellow, it'll give us access to the back. So we run a cable from the back, we can do stuff from there. Uh, if we connect to the red, it'll go over to the right, and so on and so forth. Uh, it also lets you connect up machines. So if I wanted to connect, say, the two, uh, two machines here to yellow, this will then make a virtual network cable in between the two. Isn't that cool? What we're going to do is actually get rid of these two. I'm going to go over here, grab our tier 3 stuff from here, if I can reach it. Grab our tier 3, which of course, turn it off first. Take all these out. Every single one of them, including our hard drive and our EEPROM. We can then go into here, insert them all in back into here, much like we would in the computer. Uh, we can't put a tier 3 in there because the tier 3 is there. Not with they actually need the tier 3 at this time. And as you can see, heaps more room to do other stuff. 
Um, actually, I need to, what I'm thinking about, let's just take all this out again, because I've put this in the wrong place. So we will need to grab this guy. Uh, take that out as well, and take that out. And this guy should now be empty, we can replace him. So there's our network cable. Place that there. We'll place our server in the middle there. And we will need to connect. I was talking about the the various components. This here, of course, is coming out the bottom. So if we go into here, we can find the bottom, which is blue. We'll click on this. And you'll see it now connect to the blue. One thing I won't do, however, is connect this monitor. And we'll get to that in a second. How we can fix that. So what we're going to do, though, of course, is place all our things back in here. And we can turn it on. And you'll see, and nothing shows on the screen, even though it is connected. So there are two options we can do here. One, is we can go in and make ourselves a remote terminal. And a terminal server, which is... Terminal server. So this works very similar to a computer screen. It does take up a slot, but it lets you connect these up. So we can connect it up with the blue. And of course, as I said before, that will let us connect up like a virtual network cable. Uh, now, of course, there's still no connection to this, but our remote terminal, which I'm holding here, if we right click on here, no, right click on there, it'll link it up, and there's our interface. So we can then type it just like we were using a tablet. Not quite sure what the distance is away from it, but isn't that cool? Nice little way of accessing things without having, without having to have the screen. And of course, if we wanted to, we can connect them all back up to the uh, main screen by connecting to uh, the right, I think it is. And uh, so that's our bottom for our cable and the right for that. There it is. So, there you can see, we connect it up and away she goes. So now, of course, we could go into here and we could type in our rail map. And of course, it will do all the normal stuff it does. It works the same way as a computer does. Isn't that nifty? So that gives us the ability, of course, to have multiple machines. We can now go over here. We could take this one up, but I'm going to leave that there because that's quite useful for EEPROM programming. But we could, of course, have another machine in here. So let's go in. We'll create ourselves another terminal. Let's just go put terminal civil one in there. Into there. Uh, I don't think this will work. No, so it doesn't work anymore because it's already the graphics card's already used over here. But of course, we could then link this up. Uh, link this up to uh, this guy. No. There we go. To that guy. And now, of course, these two will be connected. If we stick some components in here, so let's find ourselves a, a CPU. Uh, a CPU. Uh, this one, maybe? Be fine. We will always, always need a Gogorifix card, which we can use doubles if we wanted to. And a little RAM. Like that. We'll need the EEPROM as normal. And a hard drive, such as this one. It's a very basic machine, which we can upgrade at a later date, just by taking, of course, the server out, replacing the components, much like we would with a computer. But once again, still in a single block. Uh, and last but not least, of course, is this doesn't take a disk drive. It doesn't take disks. But what we can do is we can put a disk drive, and we can insert it into this remaining slot, into there. Share it with this machine. And now, if we go into here, turn it on, it will fail because I've forgotten to do something. A, a disk might be useful. Let's uh, grab ourselves the open OS disk. So let's go plan 9K because that's something we haven't done, haven't played with. Stick that into the disk drive, which you can do by hitting down the sneak key and right clicking. We can then go back into here, turn this guy on. And now of course it boots up. 
doesn't take this because of course it's not connected like these guys are but it'll be in here and as you can see it's booting up this is plan 9k which we haven't covered off but it's more closer to a Linux type um, system than the normal open OS is we can install this uh, let's install the one, yep, which one would we like to install? Um, let's go and install just the basic plan 9k I think. You do of course need a internet card to be able to install any of these ones that require online. While that's doing that, let's see if we can put another rack on her, don't know if we can do this. Replace that there, can we connect that to the bottom one? Not entirely sure how you can get into the two together. I'm assuming that you would use the uh, top and bottom, or left and right, depending on where you want them. But of course, that gives us then gives us the ability to have four servers in a single slot, which would be a lot more helpful for saving some space. Uh, but it sounds like our other machine is done. Yes, it is. Would we like to reboot? Yes, I would. Now we can choose the boot. Um, let's take the disk out. So shift right click once again. Take that out. And we'll try booting it again. Uh, we will need to actually go into here and reboot it that way. Turn off. Turn on. Jump into here. She boots up. Pretty little interface. And now of course we've got two different machines running two different OS's in the same block. And now of course we can access the remote terminal just as if it was available. One thing I, w I thought we'd test though, let's head out of here and see how far away we can go. Now I'm thinking it's probably not like the tablet where we can do other stuff with it. In fact, if we go, can we components? We can do it from here. Beep. No, lower. Uh, computer. Tur dot beep. Okay, didn't like that at all. It's uh, at least not exit. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> Okay, so we're up here, it's currently night time. So let's go up this way, stick one access it, yes we can. Uh, we'll head over, let's go to Tree Farm Island. Next now, yes. Okay, let's get a coal power plant slightly closer. Still access it, still works. This seems a bit cheating. How far is that let us go? Really? Okay, so that's not too, not too bad a distance. We just make it to uh, the coal pile plant just over here. In fact, I wonder if we can. Now, if you download the world, you might have noticed some secrets in the world. If you go over here, for example, we've got this little power monitor in here. Which I was going to use in a future episode. Can we access it? No. Well, it's not too bad though, because we're just about over here. And I was going to use that in a future episode, but if I could have accessed it from here, it would be great. Right, we make things a little bit different, but apparently not. So, but even still, that's... Uh, we're... We can access it there, and that's 252 meters away. So that's not too bad. Well, that's pretty much how the servers work. They're just very beefy 
expandable machines which you can fit into one single block. You could probably get four in a single block and of course if you didn't need the disk drive or two more servers then you can use the whole space. If you know how the how to get the two the racks to communicate with each other please do leave a comment down below. But I think for now that'll cover off some of the useful information we may need for a future episode. So I'm going to end the episode here because I don't think we're going to get much else done. So if you've enjoyed the episode or learned anything from it, please do hit that like button. But otherwise, have a great day and see ya!